why am I so excited? Welcome back everyone, it is Savannah. And today we are going to be reading some of John Green's books. I've only ever read The Fall in Our Stars, which is like an elementary school. And I remember crying on the bus because if you've read it, you know. I'm really excited to explore his YA fiction. And then we also have his nonfiction, Wick in Here Too, which I've already read a little bit. And I like it a lot. So we're gonna get into it. Starting with the for last We have an update on the book. I'm 31 pages into it, and we've been introduced to our main character, a.k. narrator. His name is Miles. He has just been sent to a boarding school, and he's just kind of being immersed into the interesting culture at said boarding school. I'm liking it so far. I like the language. I'm kind of curious how things are going to go. <laughs> like, I don't know. We're gonna find out. Yeah, I'm liking it so far. I'm gonna try to finish it today. Okay, so I'm about halfway into it. A little bit more than halfway. And the book is broken up into days before a certain event and then days after a certain event. It's hard to explain. Said event just happened. Like, I don't, I still don't understand exactly what happened. Everything's kind of mysterious. I don't know how I feel about it. Have you guys heard the new Selena Gomez song? It's kind of good. Anyways, I finished this. I partially listened to it on audiobook. But yeah, I finished it. I had mixed feelings initially because some of the characters were <laughs> extremely unlikable. And I think that's kind of the point. The characters are supposed to be dimensional and realistic. And so our narrator is a teenage boy and some of his thoughts are unfiltered. And so we get to see parts of that. And if you're having like, reactions like that. I think that's the point. It also ends with a quote, the last words of Thomas Edison. Very beautiful over there, which I liked. I liked it. That was that one. Next, we have a Paper Towns. I'm excited about this. Wait, I literally have no clue what this is about. Wait, what? Okay. okay, I'm a little bit confused because it seems eerily familiar to this. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I've never read this before. We're gonna find out. Let's read this thing. I have some things to update you on. I'm on duty. I literally only got four hours of sleep. So I didn't really get to read much, but I am on page 22. I am. I don't know. I feel like John Green writes in a very specific way, which is why his writing is so polarizing for people. Either you really like it or you don't. So far, the ones that I've read, it's from the perspective of like teenagers. And he also uses metaphors to try to explain big human feelings and concepts. So I don't hate it. I don't hate his type of writing. It'd be interesting to see him not just write in YA or from the perspective of a teenager, but maybe from someone who's like in their 20s or maybe something that like spans a large span of time, maybe. That's where we are. Also, I painted my nails white. The edges I need to clean off, but like, does that look weird? Anyhow, we've been introduced to the premise. We have the main character who's also a teenage boy. His next door neighbor is this girl named Margo and they used to hang out when they were younger. I think they kind of stopped talking and something crazy happened and they like saw a dead body one time when they were little. They are able to like rekindle their friendship kind of and then she goes missing. And so I think that's kind of what it's about. I'm gonna keep reading it though. So real. I don't really have the motivation to finish this. I think I want some kind of like fantasy fiction or something. I'm just not in the mood at all. I think the only thing that's really keeping me going is I just need to figure out where this girl is. Where's Margot? Like, why is she playing these little games? I just, I need to know. So I'm probably gonna finish this probably within the next hour. So yeah, let's finish this thing. Oh my God. I just finished the book. I'm gonna say all my thoughts about each of the books at the end, but I like this actually a lot. I really like the end and it gives you a new perspective on the book having read the end. I know some people might be like, it's so unsatisfying, like where's the clothes? I don't know, I feel like it's realistic and it's real. And so like the whole idea of to be loved is to be seen plays out in here. And so you see two people who are putting these different ideas onto each other, having to resolve that in the end to be able to move on, which I, I love that so much. It was really good. Oh, it's good. I like that. So, who's next? This is what we have next. It doesn't have the sheet jacket, but this is Turtles All the Way Down. I've like read 50 pages of this. I do not like it. This is his most recent fictional work and I don't know. There's like this crazy mystery missing billionaire plot. We're, we're about to find out. Let's read this. Oh 
Okay, so I read a little bit more of Turtles All the Way Down and I'm going to softy enough it. I eventually will get to it, but right now, not, not a chance. I've read two of his books like in such a short time span that I do not really want to read another one right now. Anyhow, but this, I love this. I feel like his nonfiction is amazing and I feel like this nice short essay format is perfect. It's it's absolutely perfect for him. I've only read about three of the essays in here and I don't think I'm gonna finish this by the end of the video because I kind of want to save one, like one per day because they're not too long. But yeah, I love this. This might be the five star of the video. It's so good. It's so good. Okay guys, so we are going to be wrapping up this video and I just want to do some like all-encompassing conclusions, I guess. I think it's really interesting how he includes little niche things from his life. So if you watch podcasts or if you watch his YouTube videos, he mentions certain things. Like for example, he loved Dr. Pepper. Like he also will mention the Mountain Goats, like the music group. And then he also has mentioned like Kurt Vonnegut. And so like you see all these little different things pop up in the books, which I think is so amazing because the art, music, whatever you're doing, when you make it, you're in it. And so I really like how you can see those tiny little things in it. Now let's get into like the specific books. So looking for Alaska, I really like the backdrop of this book with like a boarding school and he's like the new kid and he's like trying to fit into this new cultural setting. One of the main concepts that's in this book is dealing with death, but also the idea of projecting your own ideas of who someone is onto them. And this is also an idea that's in Paper Towns with Miles and Margot. I feel like this one is a lot more deliberate with it and that by the end of the book, they have to resolve those notions that they had with which I think was really interesting. Like at the end, they realized that it's superficial to project your own ideas of who you want someone to be and what your own desires are because that's not who they are. Like for example, there's a line and it's the end of one of the chapters, but it's like, Margo wasn't a miracle. Margo was an adventure. She was just a girl, which is like, yeah. And then the last book was Turtles All The Way Down, which if you guys remember, I DNF'd that because I didn't, mm, how do I explain this? I heard someone once say like in a comment that her last name is Holmes. And so it's kind of ironic that like Sherlock Holmes and then she also has like her OCD and anxiety and how it doesn't necessarily help her with trying to solve the mystery. And so he kind of wanted to show that in a book where it's not necessarily something that's gonna contribute to your success. And so I think that's a really cool idea. There's like a crazy plot happening with like a missing billionaire and they're like trying to like solve this mystery. And I don't know, I don't usually use use high stakes situations like that usually. So it's it's interesting. Am I the problem? I don't know. And then our last book, which I didn't finish yet because I'm planning to read an essay per day because like the essays are roughly like three to five pages, but I love this. As I said before, I think this would be my five-star read once I finish it because this is absolutely perfect and amazing. Nonfiction is definitely his calling. And I think essay format also very well suits him. Like you can hear his voice so directly and there's not really much else to say about it. Like if you've read it, you've read it. He's just, he's, he's writing essays on a bunch of different stuff. Just so amazing love. Those are all the books that I read and didn't read and I'm currently reading actually. This video doesn't have a satisfying end, but neither do his books. So you know what? That's okay. And that's real life. I will see you next time in next week's video where we're gonna be doing like the March TBR and February wrap up and all that stuff, you know, the scheduled things. So yes, I will see you next time. Peace out. Um, I've had ache so bad. Uh, my belly. <laughs> Oh my god, my head hurts so bad. Okay, so I kind of... Mm, <laughs> death ball. Uh, I, look, I don't know how to... How I describe things. How I describe things. Isn't there a movie for this? I've never seen it. Anyways.